Despite dutifully fulfilling the holiday wishes of nearly 1.9 billion children all over the world, making him one of the most beloved, popular people of all time, Santa Claus himself has remained shrouded in mystery. Barricaded inside his highly secure, snow-covered fortress 364 days out of the year, he has only been glimpsed by a lucky few. The press has had a notoriously frustrating relationship with the big man, traveling to North Pole only to be denied interview requests time and time again. Welcome to Lord Luxury, guys! Today, we'll be discussing Santa Claus and his billions. Before moving forward with today's video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more! With Santa Claus's estimated net worth of trillions of dollars, the big man is bringing home a slice full of cash, and that's just every minute. It's all because he's the first infidinaire on the globe. If you thought Floyd Mayweather had the money team, then you must have never heard of Santa and his elves. Yes, Father Christmas can only provide millions of toys to all the nice kids around the world, but he also has the fastest flying reindeer on the block. Santa Claus was born in the 4th century as Nicholas of Myra in Antolia, now known as southwestern Turkey. According to legend, he gave away the bulk of his inheritance to provide dowries for three beautiful but impoverished maiden sisters. He famously threw gold through girls' chimneys where it landed in their stockings drying by the fire. He later changed his name to Santa Claus, gained weight, grew a beard, and started his toy manufacturing operation at the North Pole, yielding apparently unlimited wealth. The big man spends every Christmas Eve trying fruitlessly to give away fortune to little children. His passionate interest in Arctic wildlife is very evident considering his large reindeer preserve, including rare flying and red nose specimens. Now, let's go through the numbers. Santa has nine magical flying reindeer on his property, eight of which he acquired in 1821. The illustrious Rudolph was introduced sometime in 1949, when Mrs. Claus found him wandering the property's perimeter. With their ability to fly upping their value, we estimate they are easily worth $100,000 apiece. 100 times the market value of a run-of-the-mill reindeer. Rudolph, who is gifted with an innate knack for navigating in the dead of night, is said to be worth $150,000, making him one of the most expensive pets in the world. The reindeer sleeping quarters are nothing short of lavish. Mrs. Claus, a great animal lover, would have nothing less for the magical creatures who are like family. They sleep on a satin-covered posturepedic-like mattress to cradle their travel-weary bones, and an elf is assigned to each deer to keep them in the utmost comfort. All told, the structure is valued at $100,000. The sleigh team's living space is situated on about 30 acres of tundra-like terrain. The reindeer enjoy the wide open space and fresh air and have a place to practice flight training exercises with their elfin coaches. The value of the land is estimated at $10 million. Santa keeps an impressive number of elves on staff, 5,000 in some. Depending on their talents and area of interest, they are given their choice of job position, usually toy maker, chef, reindeer aid, or mechanic. And all of the elves, regardless of position, live and sleep in the mega complex on the property. The property the complex is situated on is worth no less than $100 million. Now that's a lot of milk and cookie money. Though Santa is hundreds of years old, you would never guess it by how he rides his scooter. That's right, he whips around the factory on what can only be described as a rocket-powered candy cane, consulting with the elves. The toy, a gift from his team to commemorate his recent 1738th birthday, is valued at $2,400. Aside from that little number, his sleigh is obviously the most famous mode of transportation. It's hot rod red with a silver and gold foil embellishments. It has a hand-stitched leather interior and navigation system that effectively means he knows where anyone is at any given time. Under the Aurora Borealis streaked skies, behind the Claus's living quarters, and hidden away from the elves' prying eyes is Santa's personal hot tub. The big man had it installed in 1972. 
But it has been since given several upgrades, including a mint-infused hot cacao bath feature. But it's not just for vanity purposes. He's often up late into the night examining flight patterns and going over toy design. He's a hard worker, and the tub is there to soothe his aching back. The toy industry is worth approximately $90 billion globally, out of which $40 billion are happening in the US alone. Almost half of the entire industry sales happen around the holiday season. Now, that's a massive amount of seasonal business, meaning for the purposes of the holidays, over $40 billion is spending on toys, and those $40 billion are on toys alone. And it happens every year. To not go insane with research, we will consider Santa as just the giver of toys for the children. We know he brings gifts to parents, but that would ruin our math since it would be almost impossible to get even a ballpark figure of that. That would mean your assets would have to generate at least $40 billion in profit per year, which you choose to donate to receive a tax incentive. You know Santa is good with numbers at this point. He already has the best accountants in his pocket. Assuming Santa Incorporated would need both the profitability of Apple and Amazon or Alibaba's infrastructure that would put a valuation of Santa's empire of around $2 trillion for it to be sustainable. We are assuming that Santa is paying the elves at least minimum wage and getting some really good benefits. Looking at the scale of the operation, Santa is employing around 650,000 elves. Basically, he has a monopoly on the elvish manufacturing industry securing all of them in what some could consider a dictatorial manner. If you think about it, we don't get any news or blog posts from any of the elves. He has in place some giant firewall of some sort, blocking in and out access of his enterprise. Should we talk about elf rights? Let us assume everything is by the book. All this would make Mrs. Claus and Claus the first trillionaires on the planet. Considering they may both own 100% of the entire Santa Inc. company, even though his fortune would be valued at trillions of dollars, he doesn't live a lavish lifestyle. Yes, you heard it right. Santa Manor is probably the best real estate property in the North Pole. The clauses live in a surprisingly understated cottage-like home on the grounds. In fact, compared with the other structures in the North Pole, it is practically a micro-home. It was built in 1403, after the original cabin that existed on the same spot burned down. Apart from this, there is a 30-bedroom house for visitors along with the indoor and outdoor heated pool. He rides the fastest vehicle known to man. He doesn't do much more than that. Santa is a man of focus and vision. He chose the North Pole for its tax-free status, so he doesn't need to worry about state taxes so much. You can also say he even runs the North Pole. No song, book, or movie has ever done Santa's toy shop justice. What a place! It's a multi-level building that makes Willy Wonka's chocolate factory look like amateur hour. Guided through the worlds of toys, candy, and fast-talking elves, one thing was clear. This was worth a lot. Indeed, the clauses seem to care more about providing comfort to the elves and dear themselves. They're simply celebrities who prefer to live like average Joes. At the end of a rarely traveled hallway, so small you might miss it, lies an emerald green door. And behind it, a vault containing Santa's most prized possession, toys. But these aren't Legos and Barbies. They are centuries old and exceedingly rare finds. Each toy belongs to a very special child at some point, but was lost for some reason or another. Toy restoration can be a time-consuming hobby, but even Santa needs a break from the constant go-go of Christmas planning. Santa also does yoga and meditation, but for him, nothing does it quite like a nice glass of milk and a plate of cookies and a little time with the toys. Some might be surprised to hear that Santa is an investor, but it's true. In the latter half of the 20th century, he began investing fairly recently when the advent of the internet enticed him into investing. There's no gambler, though. He prefers Santa safe investments with high returns. In addition to his mutual fund, he dabbles in coal futures with consistently sizable returns on investment. He also has an individual retirement account that might sound strange for a man who has no plans of retirement. Well, compound interest works wonders when you're immortal. And with that, it's time to end the video. Did we miss out on something? Do let us know in the comment section below. Subscribe for more content just like this one and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to smash that like button and also press the bell icon to get notified about our new uploads.
Until then, adios and Merry Christmas!